buongiorno, io sono imparare italiano. Good day, I'm ready to learn Italian. Uh, Italian, one of its unique aspects is that the penultimate syllable is stressed. Penultimate means second to last, and if you really don't stress it correctly, they just don't quite hear it. It needs that rhythm just before the end. The letters in Italian, substantially like English, they do have an E with an accent mark going up, and that's mostly for spelling differentiation. They will double up the letters because the syllables are separately and uh, distinctly pronounced, and the double with the Italian trick for double letters that it's pronounced almost invariably as it would be in English. The Portuguese letters, uh, the one that really stands out is the O with the tilde. That's the squiggly line designating a missing in uh, Lisbon, Lisbon. Among the Romance languages, Italian and Portuguese have a lot in common in terms of grammar syntax. They decline the prepositions, we'll go through them. They keep the definite article to the my house. Uh, they also uh, contract both masculine and feminine as opposed to the Spanish and French that only contracts the masculine. Let's look at the Italian uh, grid I created. For the pronouns I, we, you are io, noi, tu, or boy if it's plural or formal. Then he, she, lui, le, and they, regardless of the uh, gender, loro. Again, as in most Romance languages, the uh, masculine ends in an O, plus those words ending in M-A, il programma, and words ending in A tend to be feminine, also if they end in E, and the uh, plurals take an I ending, sometimes me or A ending. As is the case in Romance languages, adjectives follow the noun, and generally, let's make them rhyme. Uh, watch that rule. Don't apply it to the verbs. Now, here's where Italian and Portuguese are a little different. They are going to take the uh, pronouns, especially denoting ownership, and they're going to place them before, and they keep those definite articles in there. So you would say, uh, to the my house, uh, a la mia casa, or... The, my friends, le mie amici. If the pronouns are receiving action, either directly or indirectly, then it's uh, mi or per me, si or per noi, uh, ti or per te, vi or per voi. Her and him are lo and la. It can be abbreviated before a vowel and uh, li and le for the plurals. Italian verbs uh, maintain the associated vowel a and e, with the exception, of course, of the first person. Io parlo, I speak. Noi parliamo, we speak. Tu parli, voi parlate, in the case of uh, the plural for you. Lui parla, lei parla, Loro parlano. He, she, they speak. The prepositions di, con, per, da, in, a, of, with, for, of, in, at. Uh, just like Portuguese, get modified in many instances in Italian. So you could say of something that's masculine, it can get contracted, so you would have uh, dal or at the al. In the can be contracted with nella, nello, nella, ne, negli, nella, and can be contracted sometimes going into a vowel. Indirect pronouns, uh, mi becomes me, si becomes se, T becomes te, V becomes ve, boy, that's easy to remember. Uh, lo and la could be contracted, now become 
yi and le, uncontracted. In the plural, we have li and le becomes loro, and it's still loro, sometimes yi. A common construction such as I have, io, o, spelled with an H, can be used with a past tense, which is often with a T. Io ho parlato, I have spoken. Bon dia, good day in Portuguese. I'm presenting these side by sides because their grammars are so similar. Portuguese in Portugal uses that liaison as the French do. That's where the last letter is melded with the next word if it is a vowel. They don't do that in Brazil. They keep the definite uh, articles, as does uh, uh, Italian. And we have U, which is uh, I, nos, us, tu, vos, vosa. Uh, sometimes the uh, Portuguese in Portugal will say O senhor when they're actually speaking about you. The third persons, ele, ela, he, she, el, is, the guys, el, us, the gals, uh, elis is a default. A pronunciation trick uh, not shown here in Portuguese that if there is an H following an N, it represents the missing letter shown by the tilde in Spanish. In other words, it's Inya. A trick for Portuguese and Italian words is that the GLPL words in Spanish and French change to an I for the L in Italian but becomes an R in Portuguese. A praia, the beach in Portuguese. Uh, o prato, the plate in Portuguese as opposed to piatto in Italian. Uh, again, the uh, words that are masculine end in O, words that are feminine end in A, add an S for the plural. Uh, again, words ending in MA are masculine. And uh, sedia, that's a little hook, C, A, that's what a little tilde means, a missing N. O words, that's T I O N words in English, are uh, feminine. And uh, we have a similar construction as we did in the other Romance languages. And the uh, definite article is included, unlike Spanish. And they will keep the uh, articles. So, o mio programa, the my program. Let's do the verbs. Uh, falar is to speak. So it's eu falo, nos falamos, tu fales, vosses fales, and ele fala, ela fala, elis falem, elas falem, he, she speaks, and then likewise in the plural. Ooh, I almost forgot to add that just like the uh, French, that the masculine plural for AL words is special, instead becomes AIS, AIS. Uh, likewise, an interesting construction uh, with regard to, say, questions, instead of saying yes or no, if it's yes, they'll just repeat the verb back. Well, the prepositions are uh, a, com, de, em, por, sobre. Uh, watch it. M terminal words going into other hard consonants are pronounced like an N. We do have contractions uh, of the something masculine as do, but now, like Italian, the N becomes no for masculine, na for feminine. And watch it for the plurals. You have dos, das, nos, nas for of the masculine things. By the way, watch it. That's not the number two. The number two is Deutsch. The remaining numbers are similar to Spanish and Italian, noting again the number two in Italian is due. Uh, one thing to note is the days of the week in Portuguese are numbered with Monday, lunes, lunedi, becoming segunda feria, second day of the week. There are other contractions associated with the uh, prepositions. 
you have, uh, for example, nesta in the something that's feminine, plural, nestas. Boa sorte e logo. Good luck and see you later.